Hello grade 6 and welcome to a new lesson in social studies. So today we're going to have a new lesson which is early civilization in Greece. So we have a three objectives for this lesson. First of all, we're going to describe the achievements of the Minoans and Mycenaeans and to describe the importance of Homer and finally to explain the importance of a Greek mythology to everyday life of the ancient Greeks. So first of all, let's have a look of the vocabulary words that we'll be using in this lesson. So the first word we have is a peasant, so it means poor farmers. Cultural borrowing means the process by which culture takes ideas from other cultures. Bards is a person or a professional storyteller who traveled from town to town telling stories and singing songs about the Greek gods and goddesses and heroes. Legends are stories handed down from earlier times that explain the past. Epics and means long poems. Mythology includes all such stories and was passed from generation to generation. So the Minoan civilization was one of the earliest civilizations in Greece. And it was named after the legendary king of Crete, King Minos. Crete is a long, narrow island with rugged mountains and flat plains. And the Greek poet Homer described Crete as a handsome country, fertile and crowded with people. Olive trees filled ancient Crete, and the climate like today was mild, never too hot or too cold. The Minoans lived on this pleasant island in small farming and fishing villages. And in about 2000 BC, they began building cities, and in each city, they built a large, a decorated palace. And inside these palaces seemed like mazes, with many rooms and winding passages. The palace was at the heart of the Minoan uh, social life, and was served as the center for government and religion. It was also a place where food could be stored and distributed. And beyond the palace were houses, small villages, and farms. The largest Minoan place was built in the city of Konosos. And it was constructed in 1700 BC, and the palace covered more than three acres and was at least three stories high. So the leftover or the ruins of the palaces will tell much about the Minoan life. So it showed that they uh, enjoyed dancing and music and sports. And in many of the painting, both women and men wear gold jewelry and have a long flowing hair. And the wall painting also showed the importance of the sea to the Minoan life. The Minoans were expert sailors and sea traders, and their trading partners included the early Greeks as well as the Mesopotamians and the Egyptians. Minoan trading ships carried olive oil, wool, and pottery from Crete to other places and returned with copper, tin, and gold. They developed a system of writing that helped them record their trading activities, and some of their writing um, were on clay tablets has survived to this day, but no one has been able to translate it and to know what's written on it. And by 1100 BC, the Minoan culture had to come to an end. The Minoans had suffered through a terrible fire, a volcanic eruption, and an earthquake. They may have also been overrun by the warlike Mycenaeans from mainland Greece. The Minoan, the Minoan culture declined as the Mycenaean culture flourished. Historians believe that one of these events or a combination of them led to the end of the Minoan civilization. So the Mycenaean civilization was named after the city of Mycenae. The experts believe the Mycenaeans were warlike people. The Mycenaeans were mostly poor farmers who ruled by warrior kings. They spoke an early form of a Greek language and for that they are considered to be the first Greeks. 
They learn many minor in the customs and make them a part of their own culture. The process by which a culture takes the ideas from other culture is called cultural borrowing. So the Mycenaeans borrowed from the Minoan culture a lot of things. For example, the Mycenaeans learned how to sail from the Minoans and became a great seafaring culture. They adapted to the Minoan writing system to their own language. They also borrowed art, pottery styles, and adjusting them to suit Mycenaean states. And about 4, 1450 BC, they invaded the Crete. They would control the Crete and much of the Peloponnese until about 1100 BC. And during this time, they continued spreading their culture through the region. And in 1100 BC, they controlled weakened. Some historians believe that the invasion by the Greek-speaking people from the north called the Druans may have weakened them. Others argue that fighting within their own culture caused the decline of the Mycenaean culture. So early in their history, the Greeks developed a great tradition of storytelling. Professional storytellers called the Bracts traveled from town to town telling stories and singing songs about Greek gods and goddesses and heroes. These stories were entertaining, but they also taught Greek ideals, values, and beliefs. Legend telling of human events and the adventures of heroes and heroines are an important part of this tradition. Legends are a story handed down from earlier times that explain the facts some legends may have been based on actual events, and in 1200 BC, the Mycenaeans conquered a city called Troy in the Trojan War. Greek legend tell of this event. In the 700s BC, a Greek bard named Homer collected these stories and composed two epics or long poems that would later be written down. Homer's first, Homer's first epic uh, was the Iliad and describes the attack on Troy. Archaeologists have found evidence that, that suggests that Troy was in fact attacked by and burned. Homer's other epic, the Odyssey, followed the other hero Odysseus on his turn returning home from the Trojan War. Homer wrote that during his 10-year journey home. Odysseus had many strange adventures, including a fight with a one-eyed giant. So by the end of 1100 BC, ancient Greeks had entered to an uncertain time that some historians called the Dark Age. The Greeks abandoned their palaces and cities, trade between the Greeks and others stopped. Poverty set in and the Greeks returned to a simpler way of life, living as farmers and herders. In search for a better life, some people left mainland Greece for Greek islands. Many of the cultural achievements made by the Minoans and Mycenaeans were lost in this time. Writing all but disappeared, as did decorate pottery, luxury goods, and bronze metalwork. Towards the end of the Dark Age, a new stronger metal was introduced, which is the iron. Through legends and myths, the tradition and beliefs of the early Greeks survived, by, survived and by about 700 BC, the Dark Age was coming to an end. The ancient Greeks were about to enter a more fortunate time.